Welcome to Virtualize Everything. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to set up your first storage share here on TrueNAS as well as creating your first user as it's going to be important to create another user outside of your admin user for the process of creating your first share and utilizing it. So in the last video, we covered how to install TrueNAS here on a Proxmox VM and some of the minimum system resources that are required. Well, that's great, but you might have been left asking how to use TrueNAS and what to do to get your first share up and running. Well, that's what we plan to cover today on this video. And the first thing we're going to need to do is create something called our storage pool. And we're going to do that by clicking storage and then clicking create pool. Here at create pool, we're going to give it our first name and we'll call it data. Now we'll press next and we're going to set up the simplest form of this share. So we're gonna go ahead and select our just one drive and we're going to call it striped and then hit next again. And we're going to move through all of this information here because we're basically looking to set up a singular drive that is going to be used to store information on with the capacity of around 100 gigs. So that's what we've done by filling out the data tab and telling it it's going to be striped. The reason we tell it's going to be striped is we need to give it some form of layout information and where it's a singular drive, we're not able to set up a ZFS array or a mirror array. So we'll tell it that it's just going to stripe and it only has one disk. So it doesn't try to merge disks or any of the other limitations or hassles that are provided by striping. At the review tab, we're going to go ahead and click create pool, and we're going to click confirm and then continue. And what this will do is finalize the creation of this particular storage pool that we're calling data here today. Now we have our first data pool, and if we click right here, you can see that we're getting a warning because we don't have any redundancy here. And that's because it's a striped drive. And what it's telling us is that if this drive was to fail, all of our data would be lost. In this particular environment, that's going to be fine. But in a production environment, this is, could be quite hazardous as you could lose all of your files if you were only working with one drive. The next step for creating our share is going to be data set. And for our data set, we're going to select it on the left hand side of the screen. And then we're going to select add data set here on the right. And what this basically is doing is creating a folder inside of the data share where we'll then be able to target in the sharing process. So we'll give this a name of, we'll just call it share. And we can leave all everything else as default for now. This There are settings in here that will allow us to sync or improve the performance or compression level of this drive and this share. But we're just going to leave them as default for now because we're trying to set up our first share, which is the simplest implementation of a share here on TrueNAS. So we'll just hit save. And now inside of our data drive, which we created or our data pool, we now have a folder called share. So we can now select our share on the left hand side of this screen. And we're going to first start by setting up a Windows SMB share. So we're gonna scroll all the way over here to add. And we're going to move down through this file path from MNT to data to share and then we're going to press save we could edit this name if we wanted to but share works fine so we're going to use it we want to make sure we enable the service at start automatically that way smb starts up if this server ever starts up and we don't have to go in and manually start this. We'll select to configure the access control list. Here, we're not actually going to do any configuration today, but if you wanted to create a specialized access control 
for this particular share, this is where you would do so. We're gonna save this access control list, and now we have a share up and running. But if we were to open our networking tab here on my Mac, it's called networking. Windows may be a little bit different. And open our TrueNAS, you'll see our connection fails. If we wanted to authenticate with admin in our admin user, we actually get told we can't log in. So we're going to need to create a user account in order to be able to log in and try to share files with this storage array. In order to do that, we're going to go down to credentials and we're going to select local users. Then we're going to select add and we're going to start by entering the full name which also autofills as the username and a password. Now that we've entered our username and our password, we can just keep scrolling. There is some other configuration we could do here as advanced users for things like VMs and stuff. But for right now, we're gonna stick with our simple username and password. So we'll hit save. And what this is going to do is create a local user that's going to be able to interact with our newly shared drive. So let's once again go to networking, open TrueNAS, click connect as so we can enter our credentials. And this time let's enter our new credentials. We were able to access our share this time and we can open our share. And if I drag some form of file here to it, you can see that we're unable to actually upload this and we're giving a circle with an X through it. That's because this this user doesn't actually have permissions to do anything yet. So to fix this issue where we can't upload anything to the drive, we're actually going to need to select data sets. And then we're going to select our share that we created inside of our data set. Here on the right hand side of the screen, we see permissions. And if we click edit, it brings us back up to that access control list that we spoke before. We're going to need to add two more access control lists. The first access control list is going to be something called a mask. And for that mask, we'll give it read, write, and execute permissions. Then we're going to add another access control entry. And for this access control entry, we're going to go ahead and add the user. And for the user, we'll add the user VE that we created a moment ago to be able to access our share. And again, we'll give it read, write, and execute permissions. Then we can go ahead and save the ACL and go back to our TrueNAS share that we logged into a moment ago. And we'll be able to, if I select the right screen, we'll be able to actually upload a file into that share. So that's all you need to know to be able to upload files and create your first share here on TrueNAS Scale. I hope you enjoyed this video, found it beneficial and informational, and will consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to get more content on virtualization and TrueNAS as we go through our TrueNAS as we go through our TrueNAS series. Consider clicking the bell notification so you get the most up-to-date and newest videos about how to configure and set up TrueNAS. As always, have a good night.